Um, hey guys, my name is Tiani Cabello. I went to Hampton for my undergrad, majored in political science, and recently graduated from Columbia University with my master's in nonprofit management. Um, and I'm from Virginia. Yeah, I am Carl Gray III. I am from the DMV area, originally from Washington, D.C., grew up in Kentland, Landover, Maryland. My name is Deborah Shula Gray, 2007 graduate of Hampton University at QT6. Um, my out of the classroom experiences have kind of shaped me into the person that like I am now. Um, and I didn't realize that little task add up and kind of teach me the fundamental skills of of grinding and making like events happen and and just going past the bar. Like when you're told no, how to how to keep going with that and still make it happen. Right. Um, yeah, anything from like doing the Hampton runaround. Um, if you're not from Hampton, that's typically like when you when you get told no in so many places that you have to keep going to like other yeah. offices or go talk to so and so and so and so. Um, so that just taught me like persistence and, and to keep going, honestly. All right, all right. So um, you were part of the student leadership program, for sure. And that's how we got came in contact. You know, Absolutely. so you graduated in from Hampton in 2017. Mm -hmm. So I graduated from Hampton in 2005. So that just shows how the network still grows, you know, and how we all can still stay in contact. So um, just talk about, I guess, the, the power of a network and um, learning that in undergrad, so what you're able to do now with your network. Um, for sure. Um, so yeah, we met we met through SLP, Student mm -hmm. Leadership Training Program, and that network has, has been amazing, even from coming out here, reaching out to all my, like, New York friends or Atlanta friends tell them I'm in the area um, and just having people look out for you in like your industry right. um, and then taking that same idea of realizing the importance of community mm -hmm. um, I brought that up here and some people I went to Hampton with we're still tight up, up here now right um, and so we kind of used our close connection to branch out to other people as well and combine all of our friends and all of our networks right um, and that's how that's how we keep growing that's how we make the dream happen yeah because when I moved up here, I didn't have any friends, um, any new friends or whatever, and I told myself I didn't want any. Yeah. Um, <laughs> just because I just wanted to get through grad school, be done. Um, but that that changed like in the, in the next week, and it's been it's been amazing. Like the support, people coming out to events, yeah. um, and just even people sitting on our panels that we want. All right. Yeah, true, true, true. So we're in we're in the. Uh, in the gym and all they had initially was they had a big they had a generator with a projector screen playing like old movies and stuff dvds or whatever and um but you know yancey sean howard they show up with generators and and, and dj equipment playing like music for, i mean to get it to get it hype i mean being in a, back up. yeah being in a, in a gym you know you know even though you may be around your friends or whatever been in it for a week, you know. It's like being in the movie to Toy Soldiers. wasn't quite the wasn't quite the movie. Everybody wasn't wasn't happy with it. But they came, they built them around back up. Like I mean, it was I mean, it was almost a Harlem jam. But you know, people were stinking, and so we couldn't try to get too close to each other. Yeah. But I mean, it, it it built them around back up once again, fulfilling a need that you know administration may not have even seen was there. Mm -hmm. You know, but us being again, people who wanted to see the best for our campus, they they brought it in. You know, they're like, look, we go, this our equipment, this our generator, we doing this, we, we making this happen for, for the students, you know. And so, I mean, it was really just, and it was out of, I mean, like a better term, the kindness of their heart, you know, the, um, their own altruistic motive. So, and then, like I said, as the storm subsided, it, we went into the student center and, <laughs> like I was saying, um, we give Demi Morris a lot of slack. I mean, a lot, a lot of flack, and um, a lot of it's well deserved. <laughs> to be honest with you, but I will say at this time, uh, this was one of the times where he really stepped up as a dean of students mm -hmm. that was there for the students. And you know, I mean, he's in the middle. Of, you know, he let, he let the the music play, and of course, you know, it, we we really do give credit to Mangana. But <laughs> it was Nick Morris too, though. Yeah, exactly. It, you know, I wish we had those photos of him dancing and all I've that. I've seen those photos yeah, somewhere. Yeah, we gotta man. get it. But they gotta find them. But yeah. Like, but he, you know, I mean, he's in the middle of the dance floor dancing like somebody grandfather, but he dancing, mm -hmm. you know, just showing that, you know, that, that, that this is something that he supports. And, and it, it was really popping. And, and before that, music was never, ever played in the middle, in, in the student center. Okay. Never. Every, everything was by the cab. Yeah, everything was by the cab. And so then subsequent to that, um, again, you know, once, 
once something's been, you know, you give us an inch, we're going to take a mile. So, <laughs> once they allowed us to do it for one thing, it was like, so next time, it was, you know, it was promoting, most of the time, they were used to promote things that were happening that weekend. Right. And so, Yancey brought it in again, you know, for probably some, some either some out for an event, or, were you out for, yeah, you were out for a party. Right, so yeah. 12 to 2 was not the event yeah. of the weekend. It was a kickoff, pretty much. Right. And it wasn't even called 12 to 2. It was bringing the <laughs> bring the equipment, and you play it until they take the I mean, stop. Right, it was more than 12. Sometimes, like, sometimes <laughs> it was like 12 to 3 30. <laughs> right, sometimes 11 to 4. So, I mean, it was, it was just, it was like, come on in. And people, I mean, it, 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 and it, did, it didn't have to be a party. It was, it was, it was a hype of it because you knew the, the real party was coming. Yeah. But it, it was just, I mean, it was, it was a little bit hype, but it wasn't like it was today where everybody got to get their best dance moves and all that stuff in. But it was, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, they want to stroll all across. Ah! <laughs> do what you do, but most of that was saved for the events of the weekend. Right. But like, it, it, again, like he said, it was fulfilling a need, and we had the we had the we had the leverage with the administration because of the stuff we did for them, you know, and for the school to be able to do it, and it just continued and continued, and you know, other people tried to jump in on it, but real talk, it was it was a new face entertainment production, you know, that it was an innovation started by a new face. To, to help the students, and I mean, they did so. I, don't know, I say they was we. I'm a part of it. Yeah, you're part but, of it. But, right, but we did. So, but I say they because I mean, you know, I was really a part of it. But I, I always give the credit to those who started. You know, Yancey, Howard, and Sean. I mean, they. they I mean, it, it was their thing from the get go. Um, and you know, I was great to be a part of. You know, I, I played my part. But even like with um, what was that joint called? You got served. Like. <laughs> Nobody was just having dance. If there was no dance contest in the middle of the students and I'm proud of that. It was like, you know, it mean, it was I mean, and these these was crews that was getting it in. I mean, like they was it wasn't like just, you know, coming in doing a running man. Like these was I mean, and a lot of these people have become professional dancers. I mean, you look at, you know, Danny and Fresh, and I, I see them on TV, and I'm like, oh, my goodness. You know, I feel, I feel real proud. I mean, like, I actually right doing her thing all over the place. Um, um, um. And that birthed the 12 to 2. 12 to 2. So, ah. <laughs> let's talk about your okay. experience of the 12 to 2 and Jeez. what it was like for you. You know, and seeing that it's still active to this day. Yeah, I mean. Because it wasn't 12 to 2 back then. No, no, it wasn't. I mean, for me, the 12 to 2, it was, again, everything I wanted from an HBCU experience was because of the show A Different World. Mm -hmm. So, I'm seeing, and I'm like, yo, this is dope. You know, people's coming together. The DJ, you know, we're, we're chilling. Like, and it's, you know, a good time. You get to see all your people. If you had a crush, more than likely, he was going to be there. Yeah. So, when you knew that this was happening, you're wearing your best outfit, yeah. you know, making sure your hair's good. Um, and then, you know, maybe kind of make sure you get in his eye view. <laughs> Not me, though, because I had a boyfriend by that time. But cool. I'm just saying. <laughs> but I'm just saying, no, it was a good time. I mean, most of the time I was usually going, like, and passing through for class mm. and stuff. So I usually couldn't stay too long. But if you had a break, if you ended classes pretty early, mm. listen. There. That was a turn up. <laughs> that was a turn up. And I'm happy to see that it is still happening mm. today. Um, I hope people know the reason why yeah. and how it got started and, and what the purpose of it of it is. And it was always it was a peaceful event. You mm -hmm. know, it was a good time always. A right. good time always had. And I think it's nice. I mean, Hampton is a it's a big campus, but it's a small campus at the same time. Yeah. And you know, being in Hampton, Virginia, there's not many things that happen like immediately outside of the campus. Like mm -hmm. unless you have a car and you can get to. So I, again, fostering some type of uh, a, an opportunity for students to come together and not have to go off and venture off campus right. to have like that social you know opportunity um, it shouldn't just be all just all studying all day every day we needed like a break right so party <laughs> why was. not and it was free yeah. and it was free and it was day parties before day parties yes. basically that's what it was. all right then how was the student leadership uh, program for you if if there were two main things that had going on at Hampton it was new face and student leadership uh, I was. I knew from the minute I stepped on the campus, I wanted to be a student leader. Um, from the minute they ran around in Ogden, so it just helped that you were a student leader and that I like to do stuff. I've always been the type of person to keep myself busy. So yeah, because my freshman year I was doing choir, new face, SUB, all of those transferred over into sophomore year to right. help out. Yeah, I was in a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So um. Talk about the 12 to 2 in the student center because us as prior student leaders prior student right. union board members mm -hmm.
prior new face members, 12 to 2 was very important. So what, what was that for you? My, there was one semester of my college career that I had a class that went between 12 and 2. And I learned my lesson my freshman, uh, it was the very first semester of freshman year. And it blows my mind uh, looking at Pirate Page and on Facebook. And people don't know about 12 to 2, or they don't know why folks are heartbroken that 12 to 2 is gone. No, it is a disgrace. Yeah, it came, there is it no came 12 back to though. Yeah. It did come back, but, but for that year, it was, it was a yeah, disgrace. Yeah, like it is, I, like, when you reminisce or just hear about the experience of people who maybe came before or after, that's when I realized uh, what a big deal New Face was. So I didn't, it never occurred to me that people didn't have 12 to 2 or they mm -hmm. didn't have a party every single weekend. Like I, it's, that stuff was natural to me. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I just, I, I don't understand how you do college without that, which sounds right. kind of bad. Like, were you bored? I don't know. <laughs> you know what's funny? Um, when I, when, what was a big, I guess, name for, for colleges at the point when I came to college was party school. Is it a party mm -hmm. school or not a party school? So Hampton at the time, when I got there, they were saying that Hampton's not a party school anymore. Right. You know what I'm saying? But, but two year, within two years, mm -hmm. when you came in after mm -hmm. me, Hampton became a party school. Right. And from that point good. forward, for almost five or six years, Hampton mm -hmm. was known as a party school. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, so it depends on what era, like mm -hmm. you said, it depends on when you came to Hampton, mm -hmm. if that was going to be a party school or not. And that, you know, we made it fun and we made it safe to be a party school, which was cool. I tell people all the time, you know, when I was a part of the student leadership program, I was a co-facilitator for two years. Um, shout out to Group 7. Yeah. And, I mean, that's I forgot what my group number was, but yeah, I'm not here. <laughs> Cinco! Oh, yeah, Cinco, yeah, exactly. Right. I, I, was a, yeah. I, was, I was a co out here living my life. <laughs> but anyway, uh, but um, we, uh, I tell people that when I go back to talk to student leaders, I say, you know, right now I'm a co in real life. Because I take what was done there, like I said, when we, you know, observing things like right now i have my own consultant firm you know i do management consulting i go into you know different organizations you know and do risk assessments and all that good stuff and all of these things were things you know i mean i do in a formalized way now but back then i did you know very informally you know it was you know when we got a we got a directive from whether it be administration from Megana or whatever you know it, you had to assess what needed to be done you know, see what materials you had, see what people you had, see what process you had in order. The same thing you do now with people, process, and technology. Um, and, and and apply it to get the job done. That is what I do now with my job. You know, my one of my current clients, um, you know, I'm going in trying to fix, you know, everything that's going wrong with their uh, with their HR system, with their student information system, with all of that. And, and as a project manager, my job is the exact same thing. To look at the look at the, the stated goal. And, and get in contact, find, find the right people, find the right processes, the right technology to, to, to bring about what the, the, the desired outcome is. And so, you know, I mean, between between SGA, you know, student leaders, uh, you know, uh, a new face, SUB, I mean, you know, I was able to touch so many different organizations. Um, you know, you know, being very Mr. Kyle I, I just want to say that. Um, <laughs> Shout out to them. I think mean, that's greatness. That was great. I love Kaidafi. Yeah, everybody yeah, loves Kaidafi. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, the low ski, they was there. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, um, you know, but doing all of those things, when when applied appropriately, if you if you if you're achieving any amount of success, if you if you apply it one place, it'll work. It'll work somewhere else. You know, the independence that we had, you know, it was, you know, had, having to be self-starters, you know, which is something that is lacking a lot in today's um, um, professional society is self-starters. People want to be told what to do as opposed to, you know, stepping out there, jumping out there and saying, okay, this is what needs to be done. I'm going to do this to make it happen. And it's all of those skills and a lot of them were, were I mean, of course, they were forged to me even as, as a youngster, but having the, the responsibilities that I had at Hampton um, really helped to forge me and help me to know that I can do this even on my own. I've been self-employed for the last four years and been successful every year. You know, every year my revenue has gone up. And so, you know, I mean, being, I mean I'm real blessed. And um, it's, 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 it's a lot of it has to do with where I've been able to apply it, whether it be, you know, at, at, at church, whether it be, you know, in at, at Hampton. But, you know, it's all coming together to make me the man that I am now.